Let's go through the papers then. I was going to say there's only one story in town, but actually the front and back of the Irish Independent is the only newspaper that doesn't have any real mention at all, or no mention at all, of John Delaney. Uh, the headline on the back of the Irish Independent, Van Gran open to legends return, coaching contact with O'Gara and O'Connell as he weighs up backroom changes. This is sort of the dream team that everyone has spoken about over the last couple of years. Johan Van Gran has left the door open for a surprise monster return for Ronan O'Gara and Paul O'Connell. The South African who last week penned a contract contract extension that will keep Matt Thoman Park to 2022 is considering a coaching revamp. Current assistants Jerry Flannery and Felix Jones out of contract at the end of the season and new deals for the pair have not been announced. Now Felix Jones and Jerry Flannery both seem to be incredibly highly rated by people down at Munster but maybe they have their own head coaching ambitions that uh, may be part of the reason that they haven't signed new deals. O'Gara, as we know, is down with Crusaders in New Zealand. O'Connell has said he's leaving Stade Francais at the end of the season. Van Graan told Virgin Media Sport, we've got to sort out the guys that we currently have. We as a coaching group are working very well together and obviously I came in mid last season. Everyone's enjoying it. We're always open to adding additional personnel. Nothing's ever impossible. Paulie's doing some great work with Stade Francais and he's finishing up. Raj has been absolutely fantastic at Crusaders and he's possibly the most sought after coach in the world, if I'm not mistaken. I've been in constant contact with them, and there's a lot of quality coaches all over the world who'll do what's best for Munster. He's been in constant contact with them. That must be great for Munster fans, the prospects of those two um, lads stepping back in. You know, hugely successful as players. That transition always isn't an easy one. Mm. It's not a given. You're so successful as players that it's going to be the case. As a coach, different skill sets involved. We, we all know that, but from the outside looking in, some of the stature of Paul O'Connor, listen to him talk, obviously, of the last year, so he does it quite a lot of commentary, very impressive, and Ronan Gara as well, so great to see those. It lads. would show a lot of, a huge amount of self confidence for Van Gran as well to bring the two of them yeah. in no, it's alongside a great point. him, because obviously yeah. they are the dream team, and we've had Ronan on plenty of times, he was on yesterday, and at road shows talking about. As you say, like it's this fairy tale I think for Munster fans that they come back and the glory days return and they win Heineken Champions Cups again, and it's not always that straightforward. But if they're there, the second results go even slightly off for Munster. It's get the two boys in. So for Van Grand to sort of face that up and go, listen, if yeah. it's the best thing for Munster, and I'm not going to be getting as much of the credit as maybe I would have been if it's too. Lesser profile players, looking if it's the best for Munster, I'll go with it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to say that from a coach, could easily go the other way, feel threatened or intimidated by those people coming in, but he's obviously, you know, he realises everybody's a winner, players, players of that calibre uh, come into the squad. And, and you're right, it doesn't guarantee trophies, Heineken Cups, etc., but it gar guarantees that those players, that kind of coaching group, would certainly uh, get the very best out of the, the players available to them. The other story out of Munster yesterday was that Joey Carberry is almost certain to miss their Champions Cup semi-final against Saracens on Saturday. Tyler Blayendal expected to start at out half. We'll have that game live for you on Saturday's Off the Ball. Also on the back of the Independent, new Nike deal can make Tiger the richest athlete in history. He is going to be rewarded for his Masters triumph with a new deal worth in excess of 170 million euro. So he can start closing the gap again on Michael Jordan as the wealthiest sports star in history. Following a costly divorce, Forbes estimated Wood's net worth at 670 million euro in 2016, but uh, Jordan was at 1.2 billion euro, but he may well start to catch up now after that Masters win. They always stuck with him, didn't they? Uh, Nike, that contract, they, they never ditched it, did they? I mean, m most of their sponsors uh, uh, ran to the hills, but I think Nike, I think they actually, did they stick with them through, the, they through did. those times? Yeah. They did, and uh, I'd say Nike were celebrating ahead of that final round on Sunday because they had Tony Finau, Francesco Molinari, Tiger Woods was the final three ball, wow. all three wearing their Nike hats. And <laughs> also in that, in addition, Hollywood filmmakers are expected to come in with offers to chronicle Woods' recovery from oh, 1199th no. in the world rankings, having been close to quitting as he was treated for sex addiction and arrested at the wheel of his car with a cocktail of drugs in his system. The Masters was huge for Nike and don't, huge for Tiger. Don't say Will Smith. Please don't say Will Smith. <laughs> Please, God, no. I mean, that's a massive mistake. He's already done, Ali. Why is it a massive mistake? Listen, that's a massive it's gone at all. Said it. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. You said it yourself, Muhammad Ali. Funny enough, Will, Will Smith. Yes, but that's the point to make. Yes, yeah, farce. I didn't even bother to go and say it because he just can't How's it beat. A farce? You can't. You can't beat the the, the, the life the man. The, the the life that Woods has lived. Uh, on TV, in front of us, day in day, uh, month in, month out. You can't replicate that. But you, if you... You if, can't better it. If you it. can condense it into a nice, entertaining no. two hours... God, no. 
That's a massive mistake. What? We've been living through it. I mean, we've been living through the Tiger, uh, Tiger Woods uh, episodes, life and times of the past it. couple of years, uh, sporting and obviously off the field as well. To try and condense that into a film, throw it, top Hollywood act, it's just car, car crash stuff. I, don't, I can't believe they Did even Did you not watch Bohemian anymore. Rhapsody? No. But this is my point. But people of that stature, you can't replicate it. They're, the kind of charisma so what you do, you go, out of here, you go out of here, right, and you watch there's a YouTube video of Remy Malik, who plays Freddie Mercury. So, Freddie Mercury, Queen, live at Wembley, and they show Remy Malik side by side. And it is perfect. No, it's not. What about the younger people who don't not remember Tiger 97? Yeah, you know, there's, there's a generation there who barely even remember the sex scandal. Oh, well, maybe so. Oscar winner well, written all over yeah, it. Yeah, take your point, maybe exception for people, but for those of us who has, and we're of that, that age group. So do you not watch any... It's a waste of time. Now, that, then, now, those any biographies? People, those people, and very, very rarely, like, those people in particular, those high-profile people who've actually lived through it ourselves, well, no, there's, there's no point. I think it's absolutely pointless. <clears throat> for somebody maybe a couple of centuries ago... You know, high pro and pol Sully. is a politician. What? Did you watch Sully? The guy who landed <laughs> the plane on the Hudson. That was quite entertaining. Well, uh, what wasn't it? Uh, Tom Hanks died. Oh, it's Tom Hanks. Seven out of ten, isn't he? Seven out of ten. Does, <laughs> have a think about it now over the next hour. What, about, there must be one good biography you enjoyed. Yeah, but if somebody ever haven't got a huge amount of knowledge on the right. person in particular or his life, uh, his life and times, and it's actually a bit more education, you'll learn a little bit more about the person. But there's nothing Tiger Woods, certainly Freddie Freddie Mercury. You need to. It's there. It's all out there. You know, they live their lives in the public domain. So, the Wolf of Wall Street. You enjoyed that? Uh, yeah. Okay. I like the Caprio. To be honest with you, I think. Caprio is a fine, fine actor. So that maybe would. Yeah, I, I did watch a little bit of it, but. Yeah, but you're talking that, that's you're going in You didn't know the story, is that it? No, yeah, I knew a bit of the story. It wouldn't uh, interest me greatly, though, as opposed to those uh, figures that you've been talking Woods, Ali, I mean, you know. You know the story. It's chalk and cheese, isn't it? Right. You've got to stay away from them. I think you've just got to stay away from them. You people. can't improve in their documentary, story. A documentary of, of sorts, fair enough, but an actual role in Will Smith and, oh, come on, Fresh Prince, here we go. <laughs> No, Other no actors chance. are available. Doesn't have to be. <laughs> There's a whole new young generation coming through. Any of them. What have you got there in the examiner? What I've got, obviously, a uh, picture of uh, John Delaney probably sums up his uh, present uh, predicament, certainly from uh, jo uh, John's point of view. Uh, back of the uh, sun. Uh, just a caption there to Troy Deeney big mistake last night uh, cost his team and a big win for us and a lot of question marks about them their ability to go away from home between now and the end of the season and get the amount of points needed for a Champions League place well proved the point uh, last night this is an interesting one uh, Rashford had been linked to a £100 million pound move mm. uh, to Barcelona I can't see that happening myself he's got two years left on his contract this is in a lot of the papers today of yeah, Marcus Rashford no, I, I'm is not £100 million not an absolute bargain? It, well, it is for his star, but I don't, personally, I don't think that young is going anywhere. I think he's Manchester uh, through and through. And as long as United you know, look after him this summer and are fair in terms of contract negotiation, I don't think he's going anywhere. He's the future in Manchester United Football Club. They have to build their team around him. And uh, yeah, again, just a, a quote from uh, Solskjaer on the Herald. Uh, United have belief, you're talking about the spirit in 99, that type of thing. Uh, it'd be interesting his team talk to be a fly in the wall before the game. And obviously, Brian has been very vocal in terms of <coughs> John Delaney's position. But not just that, I know was, uh, uh, Brian has been keen to broaden the conversation out in terms of the FA <coughs> board as well. And, and uh, question their kind of capabilities moving forward, saying uh, pretty much everybody's got to go, it's got to be the board with John. I understand this point. I don't know the FAI board uh, individually in terms of their individual qualities, in terms of their uh, experience mm. uh, in the game, even business experience, that type of thing. Probably Brian does, probably knows individually these type of people. So, Well, from what you've been following over the last week or so and from the committee hearing and all that and all the revelations that have been coming out about expenses and just the general running of the FAI, yeah. do you not feel for the betterment of Irish football we just need a clean break? We need to think it up all over again? 
Yeah, no, I can understand that. I'm always a little bit maybe the baby out of the bathwater, though, uh, the, to be honest with you. Easy thing to say the whole board must go. Is it 10 board members, is there? Like, John's got to go, the board members got to go. And I understand the argument, and I think probably it's, it's, it's looking that way uh, at the moment. Now, if that is the case, I mean, if those 10 board members are proved to be pretty much incompetent, is that what people are saying? Well, of course they uh, uh, have to go. But if there's a couple of people in there who pretend, with their experience on the board over the last couple of years, potentially you think well actually no I, I a bit of respect for those people they have good understanding of the game good, uh, business acumen whatever yeah we can keep them we can bring some fresh uh, faces in as well and we can add to it yeah uh, I, I've no problem with that I'm just a little bit that sweep and everybody's got to go we, we start again I can understand it and I can understand the arguments and I think they are, they are, they are fair arguments and I genuinely think that's probably the way uh, uh, things are going do you not think they're all tarnished by association that what we saw in front of the Oireachtas Committee yeah. last Wednesday with the insight into how the FAI had been run, into the lack of knowledge, it seems, of an awful lot of people on that board as to how the FAI was been run, yeah. would suggest that no matter what their qualities are, and I'm sure, as you say, there are people in there who have yeah. things to offer, that by association with the yeah. what looks as though it's assumed going to be the previous regime, that actually, yeah. while they're there, there's still always going to be doubts about who's running the show. Yeah, I can understand that, but as far as we kept two or three board members, there wouldn't be in a huge position of power. A new CEO comes in, another six or seven, you know, board members, and mm. that those board members who stay aren't going, aren't going to uh, yield a huge amount uh, of influence. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to, uh, to see how it pans out. Um, uh, yeah, that kind of this picture of a kind of a small cabal in there, the kind of FI board has kind of been put out there, and I and like I said, I, I can understand that. I suppose if you're one of those FI board members and you felt well, this is wrong. Things need to change uh, here. I feel as if I should speak. That's probably that's probably not an, an easy environment to go and uh, do that to be vocally uh, critical of your of your kind of board members and certainly well, your. Well, that, well, that's your, the point, isn't CEO. it? That that's well, the point. That well, no, uh, clearly yeah. there was an environment that if yeah. they were unhappy and if there were parts of the organisation yeah. they were unhappy about, it, they didn't seem to be able to yeah. find their voice or have an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or certainly cho or either chose not to use it. Yeah, that's right. And that stunts the growth of any any type of organisation. You need pe people need to be vocal, uh, offer uh, opinions, uh, criticisms even, like, you know what I mean, fall out with each other. That's how thing, uh, things invariably get better in a kind of uh, group environment. You need that, uh, that type of healthy environment. People need to be comfortable coming out and offering those opinions. If that hasn't be been the case over mm. the last number of years, of course that's, uh, that's wrong. And we're going to see those changes. It looks as if we're going to see those uh, changes implemented going forward, hopefully for the better. So the back page of the Irish Daily Star, Delaney, embattled ex-CEO, clings on to power, Kerr, board needs to go. Let's hear from Brian Kerr, actually, I think, while we're going through the back pages, because these quotes from Brian Kerr that are in a lot of the papers were from last night's Off the Ball. He was talking to Joe about the statement that John Delaney is to temporarily step aside from his role as FAI Executive Vice President. Well, I'll tell you must remember that the majority of these board members were part of a special EGM a few years ago that changed the rule yeah. away from people had to leave the board when they were 70, that they couldn't, they couldn't go forward once again. Now that was a UEFA rule that was introduced across all the, um, all the countries, uh, all the participating countries in UEFA competitions. And the FAI and that board containing uh, Mr. Murray and Mr. Cody and several of the, the current members who are still there, they chose to make that decision at that time. And as usual, and now we have a situation where they've got the 79. As we look at the evidence of Mr. Murray at, at the door committee yeah. the other day when he, he said they had one bank account and we discovered later that he had 24 bank accounts. It's not like he was even out by two or three or four or five. He yeah. was out by 23. So, you know, that, that shows the limitations of the board. Yeah. And when that decision at the EG was an incorrect decision, got away with it. And that's why I've maintained for many years that the association has, has lacked leadership. And I think that's been, mm. that's been very obvious to a lot of people that were close to the action. But it's become um, particularly obvious after the behaviour in the last couple of weeks and, and, and more than ever when they appeared at the Dáil Committee. The corporate governance one, I, I'm not surprised at you being able to sum it up in a couple of very brief sentences. Do your business properly with no message. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know, so as it goes on, I mean, it, it looks like it's, it's the end of this era and there's considerable changes going to have to come. I don't think people 
uh, the general public or the football I won't use the the the, the, the phrase that that that's the, the FAI have bundled around for years, but the people who are involved in football and po- people who are supporters of football will not accept this board making decisions for football in Ireland in the future. Some strong comments, as always, from Brian Kerr on last night's Off the Ball about the ongoing saga at the FEI. If you missed any of this yesterday evening, so there were long meetings yesterday out at the Carlton at the airport, an FEI board meeting. A sort of expectation had developed all weekend that because of text messages he had sent to his friends that John Delaney was going to resign. The statement from the FEI said that the, after meeting in Dublin, they met with John Delaney. John Delaney has offered to voluntarily step aside from carrying out his role as executive vice president with immediate effect pending the completion of an independent investigation by the association into issues of concern to the board. Honorary Secretary Michael Cody, Honorary Treasurer Eddie Murray both voluntarily resigned from the board. So that obviously then raised far more questions because it was such an ambiguous statement about what John Delaney was doing. It didn't even say that they had accepted his offer to step aside as executive vice president. And uh, there was then a letter that we've seen that the FAI sent to Sport Ireland in response to the seven, eight questions from last Wednesday's committee that they said they couldn't answer at the time, but they'd come back. Uh, they did come back then late last night. And in that letter, they said, you'll have seen today that Mr. Delaney has stepped aside from his role as executive vice president. Part of the uh, maybe the most interesting aspect of those answers to the questions that were left unanswered was that... Uh, one of the questions was, why were other bank accounts not utilised in the absence of the €100,000 loan? The FAI say at the time the association was provided with the £100,000 loan from John Delaney, it had utilised all available funding across its bank accounts. So across its 24 bank accounts, the FAI had used all its funding before John Delaney gave them that €100,000. Uh, still a lot of questions, and still one question actually outstanding that wasn't answered in this, which was, who signed off on the statement which said that the board all knew about that €100,000 loan. It's since turned out that only three people knew about that €100,000 loan. That was asked. The FAI said they would get back with an answer to that, but it seems that they are still waiting for an answer. Uh, the Joint Committee on Transport, Tourism and Sport meet again today. Uh, John Tracy and Sport Ireland are going to be up in front of them. Minister for Sport Shane Ross is going to be up in front of them. So this still has a long way to run. And I guess you can look at this in two ways, it seems. John Delaney told friends over the weekend that he was going to offer his resignation. That hasn't happened. So did the uh, FAI refuse to accept his resignation as they don't want such a key figure in this saga leaving the association without answering all the questions that need answering? So therefore he temporarily steps aside. Or somehow do the FAI and John Delaney think that they can weather the storm and ride this out and that eventually we will get fatigue? We're a month into this already. <coughs> I think we've got five different reports at the moment. We're, we, do we want to do a poll? I think we should do a poll really. Or we should definitely have a vote on what's your favourite FAI report. Is it the Mazars report, the Grant Thornton report, the FAI governance report, the latest independent investigation into issues of concern of the board? Or maybe it is going to wait and see what the Office of Director of Corporate Enforcement reveals. Yeah, no, I reached that uh, ceiling of mental fatigue, I think, uh, uh, some time ago. I'm not even in the country, like, experiencing this on a, a day-to-day basis. So. I don't think other people have. Is the I, I, I actually would have thought if we got a month, five weeks into this, that there would have been a certain amount of fatigue. But because of the FEI's appearance and their attitude at that committee, I think people I think in this it, country are right. very invested into what happens next, and particularly what happens with John Delaney. The star then, so as we heard there from Brian Kerr's statements, it's on the front and the back. Ex-CEO steps aside but won't quit after 23 days in his new role. Fifth probe launched as two quit FAI board. And inside, they, like a lot of the papers, they've unanswered questions that they want to go through. And they have a lot of analysis of it, including from Eamon Dunphy, who uh, talks about maybe what happens next and who the potential replacements are as CEOs. He says various names have been touted around and they aren't convincing. Delaney became a celebrity administrator, so the last thing you need is another celebrity like Niall Quinn. Uh, well, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with that. I think that that's too easy. I think you have to look at the attributes of each in the individual uh, candidate. And I don't think you can rule uh, Niall out just because he was a high-profile. Uh, football player for Ireland. That that seems that seems an act of stupidity, to be honest with you. You know, put put that to the side. Uh, have a look at the man, his uh, experience, what he can uh, bring to the position. Percy, Percy for me, I, I think somebody who has a grounding 
uh, within sports, w- uh, within the game, uh, can only be an advantage. I think it's it's one thing which should be taken uh, into consideration, not the only thing. Clearly, there's a huge respect. Someone with, with, a, with a business background and some experience in a position like this, obviously not people will point to Niles' uh, uh, position up at uh, uh, Sunderland mm. CEO whatever position you want to tag uh, up there very competent I was there for the year at the time when uh, when, when Niall was there so yeah I think it's too, in some respects it's too easy people so a lot of people would have Niall Quinn straight in there uh, so, uh, I, I wouldn't I think he's, he's, a, he's a somebody who should be under consideration uh, potentially somebody who should be spoken to if you're talking about all those players ex-football players who potentially could make an argument for probably Niall uh, would would be the obvious one, but then there'll be people with no uh, sporting background whatsoever, uh, from a purely business uh, background, mm. who you'd imagine would have a big effect coming in, and clearly there'll be a number of th- those contenders as well. So I wouldn't rule somebody out because he hasn't got the uh, that kind of sporting background. But I certainly wouldn't rule somebody like Noel Quinn out because of the fact that he has. I don't think Noel is somebody who actually gravitates towards the camera. He's kind of ego-driven. You know, he desperately needs to be in front of the, uh, the camera, that, uh, that type of thing. Noel's pretty much comfortable in his own skin. I think he's been pretty vocal of late in terms of how he feels about a couple of issues, the League of Ireland in particular, which I think we're all interested in. I think in terms of the marriage between the FAI and the League of Ireland, that clearly hasn't been, mm. uh, has, has had its problems. And that's key for me going forward as well, because it's our national game. It's uh, it's the one which took uh, should take pre- uh, precedence over anything else. International football, I understand, but we've got to find a solution to the League of Ireland uh, going future. So hopefully, the new man coming in, that will be uh, foremost in his mind. And I guess the key thing there is, if we are getting to the stage where we rip it up and start again, and who knows the way this is developing? Maybe as as it rumbles on, we look at the FAI and wonder if the FAI has a future. If we need to completely rip it up and start with a new Football Ireland organisation where you yeah. maintain the key people within the FAI, the many good people who work there, but you come up with a totally new board, much like they did at the Olympic Council. And I suppose it's so set in our brain that the CEO is this yeah. key front of house, very public figure. Doesn't necessarily need to be the case, actually, as you say. It could be a business person who has a very good background who then surrounds themselves with a lot of good footballing brains from the League of Ireland, from the women's football, from a a role in there for somebody like Brian Kerr or maybe for Niall Quinn. It doesn't necessarily need to be CEO, but it doesn't mean that a lot of those key voices can't have a strong influence. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, w- w- whatever the, uh, the solution is, wherever you know, it doesn't have to be. See, it doesn't have to be the kind of a uh, uh, natural pyramid that we're used to seeing, like in business, in, in big exactly, corporate yeah. organisations. So, whatever the solution is, as long as you have got the right people in in key areas of the organisation, for me, that's absolutely key. And you're right, somebody who's going to listen to the opinion, uh, football people who've got a good knowledge of the game, have the best interest of the game at heart. You've mentioned uh, Brian in particular. That's clearly the case. We know how passionate Brian is about. The the game over here, particularly League of Ireland, and, and I'll mention League of Ireland again because I think it's had a, a, a rough time of it. The League of Ireland over the past couple of years, but there's shoots of optimism there. The League of Ireland this year is going to be a very competitive. Some uh, some v- outstanding young players in the league always has been, but getting probably you getting- were here on Saturday, Kenny. Johnny Ward told you it's over. Shamrock Rovers of the yeah, League One. No, it's over. I think the title. I think they're having their parade out in Tallinn next week. <laughs> but that's the, that's a good thing. Rovers have come to the fore. We've had Dundalk and uh, uh, Cork obviously the past couple of years. Rovers coming to the fore. Derry have made a great start to the season. So some great stories there, and some just underneath that. I'm talking about the, the quality of uh, football and a uh, young uh, young players in particular uh, coming to the fore. And you can point to the underage structures mm. there in particular. Got a lot of criticism, FAI and stuff. But in terms of the stru- uh, infrastructure they're putting in place uh, underneath that in say, 1970s, 15s uh, leagues and, to- and uh, things like this trying to target that, that young talent around the country and uh, get them within the system good quality coaching all those type of things have been happening slowly uh, behind the scenes over the past couple of years uh, Nathan so yeah so I, th- I think as much as a little bit dispirited at the moment a lot of neg- negativity for, ob- uh, for obvious reasons for me the future still is bright and, and that's the reason for it because of the, uh, the qualities that I see um, and certainly not just in the international teams and the underage set there's a lot of good stories there under 19s under 70s mm. been hugely successful uh, of late and the League of Ireland as well the talent pool within the League of Ireland we've got to help those clubs out uh, and help those young players as well Yeah and we'll have those conversations over the next couple of weeks as well as to where Irish football goes next in fairness to Dunphy he's only got about 200 words I'd say in the, uh, in the star he still manages to have a couple of very very good digs so obviously Niall Quinn celebrity 
In his newspaper column, Stephen Hunt talked of needing someone with a background in the game, and between the ages of 35 and 45, maybe he was just trying to put himself in the frame. Hunty next CEO. <laughs> Does he get the Kenny Cunningham endorsement? I thought, I'd be surprised if Stephen's putting himself in the uh, in line for Would that. You? Yeah, I just think it's one of them. We I don't like to hear that, to be honest with you. The one thing about the John thing, John might well go. I think he the, the fact is he probably w uh, will do. But I, I I'm a little bit kind of, you know, somebody who's in. A, you can see somebody they're in a corner. You know, and it's it's it's, it's looking bad. And John's had a high profile uh, position for for a long period of time. Obviously, he loves the position. He's got a lot of passion for the game. A lot of stories about around the country doing a lot of individual clubs and all that uh, uh, type of thing. So, so there's clearly that that side to to as well. I'm not yeah. making excuses here at all. So, I, I I wouldn't get any um I wouldn't get any joy to see like J uh, John being shown the door and literally being ki be kicked out of the job. I wouldn't get any huge satisfaction with that. And when I hear some of the comments coming out, I don't like to hear some of it. I, I accept some of the criticism uh, as long as it's made in the in the right manner and it's coming from the right place. Like like I said, Brian uh, there puts a very sound argument. Uh, other people will. When it doesn't get personal and it's about the uh, the, the association, about football, and what's mm. what's the best what's best for that? That that's absolutely fine. I've no problem with that. Don't like it when it when, when it gets uh, too personal. Uh, he shouldn't get it. There's ulterior motives. I don't want him to get it because of this. You know what I mean? There's personal things come into it. You know we should be bigger than that. Push all of that to the side and let's make the decision which are right going forward. Uh, for the game, for the game in Ireland, uh, pu purely and simple. Personalities really shouldn't come into it. Yeah, it's been personality driven, though. I guess is the problem that for the yeah, last yeah, decade. Yeah, more, yeah it can so. be. Yeah, I know it's an easy. That's an easy thing uh, for me to say. But really, that uh, that should be the case. If you have the best interest of the game, that that that's what should be driving it. Uh, finally, the front page of the Irish Examiner: Entire FAI board urged to resign uh, after John Delaney's decision to step aside. The majority of Oireachta Sports Committee members will demand that Sports Minister Shane Ross and Sport Ireland remove the FAI board at a crucial meeting today, saying the FAI needs to be swept clean to restore trust. However, despite the demands, the Irish Examiner understands Sport Ireland will tell TDs it cannot remove every board member without risking legal action or potential FIFA sanctions against the Irish football team under political interference rules. So uh, it will be an interesting afternoon. Obviously, we'll be across all that on offtheball.com. We've seen the opening statements from... Uh, John Tracy and from Sport Ireland where they talk about the restoration of funding and what needs to happen including in that is an audit of the sporting body's governance and financial control and that certainly looks to be where this is heading that there will be a full audit of everything that's been going on at the FAI over the last few years.